Okay, well, thanks, Mike. I don't know what to say after, after, <laughs> after that. Uh, I just start, I guess, by saying, I'm, much like Steve, I grew up in a small town. My, my father was a country physician who did house calls and got paid in tamales a lot of the times in, in, <laughs> in South Texas. But from him, I learned a love of science and biology in particular, and he really encouraged me to go to medical school initially. But as I learned more about science and medicine, and I had, was lucky enough to get participated in some, some research programs at the University of Texas in Austin. And, as soon as I did my first experiment and started doing stuff in the lab, I realized I, I was destined to be a scientist, not a, not a doctor. And there was one major reason for that, as I watched my dad and, and other people, you know, if you're, if you're an MD, uh, not just a lowly PhD, but if you're an MD, you have to be right most of the time. You have to be able to summon algorithms, and because and, if you don't do the right thing, then you can hurt somebody or fail to help them, at, at the very least. And, and that's much too disciplined and rigorous for for me, uh, you know, I, I don't like symphonies. I like the blues, and so, uh, and so, I decided to be a scientist because to be a scientist, you could be wrong a lot. All you have to be is just right occasionally, as long as you're right on something that's important. And so, that's really what's kind of driven me over the over the years. But you know, it's been a it's been a really interesting path to to this point. When I was a postdoc in, in California, and the late 70s, I really reached a crossroad where the uh, group that I was playing with at the time, this band decided to uh, move back to Texas and become totally professional and had to make a decision, you know, was I going to do that or was I going to keep playing in the, in the lab, you know. Both were fun in their, own, in their own way, but it didn't take long. I mean, I just, I really decided immediately, no, I'm going to keep doing science because it's, it's too exciting and I still don't find some time to play in the band, the, the checkpoints, as, as you heard. Um, but I, as a graduate student, even though I was training in biochemistry, I, as a graduate student, I became very interested in the immune system. T cells had just been discovered, and this idea that you had these cells cruising all over your body, looking for things that were had gone awry, and maybe a virus infection or a cancer cell, and the immune system could could destroy them without you know killing you was was a pretty amazing process. I got more and more interested in it, and when I took my first faculty position at, at MD Anderson, actually not in Houston, but at a small place it's called Smithville, um, where I got to live in the woods and walk to my lab, you know, through the forest. Anyway, there are forests in Texas, by the way, not in South Texas where I grew up. But anyway, so I switched totally to immuno immunology when I when I got to, got there and and just been studying it ever since. And over the next few decades, both at Smithville and then at 20 years at Berkeley, um, the whole um, intricate interplay of positive stimulatory and inhibitory signals really fascinated me and there was always another layer on the onion to peel and it just offered just incredible joy and, and, and like Evelyn I, I was so happy about that you know it was amazing to me I was getting paid for having that much that much fun um, as you as you heard from Mike uh, there was this aha moment in, in, in Berkeley when we found this molecule c 4 actually turned off immune responses and I had the notion, we hadn't started this work to do anything about cancer, but I had the notion that if we could turn off the brakes for a while, maybe we could give the immune system a chance to keep rolling and uh, eliminate cancer cells. And so our first mouse experiments worked out pretty spectacularly, and we did it and done a lot of kinds of cancer. The interesting thing about this was that it said you treat cancer by ignoring the cancer cell, because the immune system doesn't know if it's KRAS or if it's you know, BRAF mutation, or if it's even kidney or breast, it just knows it's it's got mutations in it, and the immune system ought to attack it. And, and so, we're also saying not only could you treat cancer by ignoring it, really, but you could treat it by not trying to activate anything. You just take the brakes off and let the immune system do what it's going to do anyway. And you heard from Mike; it really worked out. And the, the, the name Ipilimumab actually is an interesting story. This was um, after Alan Corman and others got us involved with Metarex and, and the antibody was developed. At first we called it MDX010 and it was pretty cool to talk about the MDX project and then the FDA named it Ipilimumab, which was really disappointing. <laughs> um, and so I told uh, Niels Lomberg and Alan and others at Metarex, well, why can't you get her to put an H in front of it? After all, we were at Berkeley, but I guess the... <laughs> They decided that hippie lumumab was not exactly a, have enough gravitas to uh, to uh, you know treat treat cancer, 
And so the time came for the first time I decided I wasn't a, just going to do basic science anymore. I really wanted to do work to translate this to the clinic. And lucky enough, about that time, Harold invited me to come to Sloan Kettering and learn about the clinic. I didn't know anything about the clinic, literally, at the time. And went there to really learn about it and interact more closely with the biotech industry and, and move this to the clinic. And it was really amazing to me when, when the reports came in uh, about uh, CTLA-4 working in patients, but it really became real when I met Sharon Belvin, who was just introduced, and uh, after she was basically cured, uh, she shared with me photos of her two kids later on, and uh, it really made an impact on me. And uh, anyway, so meeting her and following her family has been pretty amazing. Um, in any event, so uh, when the, the C24 antibody ipilimumab, now Yervoy, was approved by the FDA in 2011, I thought, well, you know, we're not done yet. You know, this is really not the end, but it's really the beginning. It's time to really figure out how this drug works, how the second generation PD-1 works, how these could be put together, how could they could be combined with small molecules and other things. And in order to do that, we need to do a lot more studies in, in humans. So still doing basic science, but now more in humans than animal models. And lucky enough, Rhonda Pino asked me to come to MD Anderson, where we started the immunotherapy platform there. And Pam Shorman and I run this, and, and are now, I think, making, uh, continuing to make contributions to, to furthering this, this kind of cancer therapy, and hopefully bring the benefits to patients with many more kinds of cancer. And uh, we're about 22% of patients that get a single round of treatment, melanoma patients with your voice, are, li are alive 10 years later. And we got to get that fraction up, and we got to do it in more kinds of cancer. And so that's what the challenge is now. Um, I'm really um, humbled by getting the uh, clinical award as a basic scientist who's just a lowly professor. You know, people. <laughs> there, actually, there were two things going against me early on in this work. One of them was the immunologist considered me, you know, suspect because I did tumor immunology. You know, they would say Jim's a tumor immunologist. You know, and who the, you know. And, uh, you know, and then also there was the problem of, of not having a, an MD. But, but still, I think it, it's worked out. And again, as a basic scientist, I'm really uh, amazed and, and humbled and honored by getting the clinical award. And I just want to uh, express my gratitude for what the Lasker Foundation does and, and, and popularizing both basic science and the achievements that can be made in, in clinical science, because all of this came out of basic science, not any attempt to cure cancer. It came out of understanding how the immune system works. And I hope to be continue to work to be deserving of this award and really make this work better. So thank you very much. Thank you.